Hello, this is James Cook, Assistant Professor of Social Science at the University of Maine at Augusta, and we are talking our way up to MRQAP, Multiple Regression Quadratic Assignment Procedure, uh, as a statistical uh, exercise in explaining actions according to social network uh, attributes. But before we do uh, a discussion of multiple regression quadratic assignment procedures, we have to think about what regression means more generally, and that's what the purpose of this video is. Uh, if you've taken social science research methods and you're familiar with regression analysis, this should be quite familiar to you. Uh, otherwise, it may not be. and It never hurts to cover territory in more than one way. We'll be talking about in this video variables, operationalization of variables, relationships between independent and dependent variables, looking at the regression equation and thinking about what that means, and looking more particularly at the slopes in regression equations. This is a general introduction. I encourage you to go back to the lecture uh, for week 12 in the course to then take a look at uh, voter turnout data. And we will supplement this with uh, a lecture 13 later in the week, which will apply our understanding of regression to the network context in which we look at relationships in matrices and not just individual cases. Let's start with the idea of a variable. What is a variable? A variable is simply something that you can measure that varies. That's all a variable is. Uh, it could be something like temperature that goes up and down uh, in terms of degrees Fahrenheit or in terms of degrees Celsius. It could be uh, something like direction that has different values that might not have numbers associated with them, but that are different nonetheless, like the direction of up versus down, left versus right. Um, the variation in variables matters if you're interested in outcomes. For instance, if you're studying cancer and you're doing cancer research, one of the classic questions is, how long have I got, doc? How long is the time to death when cancer is diagnosed? Uh, is it no more different than what you would expect for someone else? who doesn't have a cancer diagnosis, or is your life shortened? By how long uh, is your life shortened? How long is the time until death? Who wins an election? This is a recent uh, outcome that might be of interest. We had an election day this month in November 2012. Someone was elected president. Who's going to win? Uh, that's something you may want to predict if you're interested in politics. When we study variables, it's important to operationalize them. Uh, to operationalize is it's a fancy word that simply means you have to measure your variable in exact terms. So when I say time to death from cancer, I should be more specific. Uh, to operationalize it is to make it so that anybody can make the same measurement and be sure that those measurements are comparable. So if instead of time to death from cancer, I say number of months from diagnosis to death, then that's a particular unit, a number of months, and it sets a standard for how I'm going to count the months. Uh, if I talk about, well, I have a lunch partner, what is a lunch partner? It may mean something different to two different people, but if I operationalize that idea, that variable, you know, is someone my lunch partner? Yes or no. Those are two different uh, values associated with that variable. I could say, well, let's measure that as someone with whom you've eaten lunch at least once in the past month. If you've eaten lunch with someone in the past month, we're going to count them as a lunch partner. Otherwise, we're going to count them as not a lunch partner. A bright line between the two states. That's what operationalization is. And when you... Uh, engage in your second written assignment for the social networks class, be sure to operationalize your variables and to tell me what that operationalization is so that I understand exactly what you're measuring. You're going to be looking at two different kinds of variables when 
you uh, do your research work. The first kind of variable is the outcome variable, the thing you're interested in explaining, the variable whose values are affected by some other variable. That's called the dependent variable. The dependent variable is the variable whose value depends, dependent depends, on the independent uh, variable's value. The independent variable is the one that stands alone, affecting the dependent variable, affecting how of the, the value of the dependent variable, but not necessarily being affected by it. So let's think about that in particular. Uh, let's say we're asking this research question, why does time to death from cancer vary from person to person? This is a research question that is really important. If you're engaged in a fight against cancer, you want to know why some people die more quickly and some people uh, take a longer time to die or die just at a normal rate. So if we have our dependent variable, time to death from a cancer, we can think of possible independent variables. The size of the tumor might matter. That's a variable. You can measure it in, say, centimeters. The patient age in years. Uh, older patients might die more quickly. Uh, is there heart disease in the patient? That's a variable that has two possible values, uh, yes and no. That's called a dichotomous variable. Dichotomous means it has die means two, two possible states. Those are all independent variables. Those are things that affect the dependent variable, or at least you think they may. Uh, we could ask a more social question. Why do some friends, but not others, like each other on Facebook? Uh, some of your uh, uh, friends in real life are also your Facebook friends, and there might be a few who aren't. Why is that? Okay, well, the dependent variable is liking a friend on Facebook. Uh, is there a Facebook like or not for the set of your friends? What are the possible independent variables? Well, maybe it's about how long you've been friends. Maybe you wait a little while before you uh, like someone on Facebook. Maybe it has to do with the distance between the homes of two friends. Maybe Facebook is a way of keeping in touch with people who don't live next door to you. Uh, or, heck, maybe it's, it's a, something that you're reminded to do, you know, in a contrary prediction, by running into someone in the hall if you live in an apartment complex. You know, you run into them in the hall, you remember, oh, I should add that person on Facebook, whereas if someone lives far away, you, you don't think of them as much, and maybe you won't like the, them on Facebook as, as, as often. Okay, that's a social media question. Uh, we can answer that by studying some independent variables and tracking it along with our dependent variable. When we think about the relationship between independent variables and dependent variables, often we're suggesting that there is a particular direction uh, to the relationship. The direction of effect can be positive, negative, or there could be no relationship. A positive direction to a relationship is one in which, as the independent variable rises, so does the dependent variable. And as the independent variable falls, the dependent variable falls too. What one of the variables does goes up or down. The other one also goes up or down. They do it together. In the case of weight and height, uh, this is uh, a, a circumstance in which perhaps weight doesn't change your height, but height may certainly change your weight because there are certain body structures that are larger when you're taller. Your legs are longer. Your arms are longer. Uh, for instance. So we could chart those two and we would notice that as height goes up, weight goes up too. This line it shows where most of the dots would fall. And if we make that sort of a prediction, okay, that's positive. And that's just the definition of it. The definition of a negative relationship is that as an independent variable goes up, the dependent variable will go down or as the independent variable goes down, the dependent variable will go up. We might think that as the patient age goes up, the time to death from the diagnosis of a cancer goes down. Okay, negative doesn't mean bad, it just means that uh, the two variables vary in opposite directions. 
as one goes up the other goes down as patient age goes down as people get younger the time to death from a cancer diagnosis goes up people live longer if they're younger with a cancer diagnosis at least in this example and but it's also possible that there's no relationship at all and if you know your geometry you know this line expresses a zero slope uh, no relationship means that as the independent variable rises or falls, the dependent variable just doesn't change at all, really. So you could think about differences in shoe size between friends. You know, do you have the same shoe size? Zero difference. Or are you three shoe sizes apart from your friend? We might predict that there's really no relationship between that and whether you like that friend on Facebook or not. Now, I guess if you think about it really carefully, you might be able to come up with some kind of prediction about that. But there's no simple, intuitive reason to suspect that we discriminate according to shoe size when we think about which friends we're going to uh, like uh, on Facebook and which ones we won't. So there really should be no change depending on the differences in shoe size, and that's no relationship. Positive relationship negative relationship, no relationship. Three very different uh, relationships between an independent variable, something that has the potential to explain a dependent variable, and then the dependent variable itself. Okay, so we can express the idea of a positive relationship in terms of a line and a negative relationship in terms of a line but we might be interested in thinking about, well, how strongly positive is that positive line of relationship? How strongly negative is that negative relationship? And how would we find out? Uh, to do that, we would look at the regression equation. And the regression equation is one in which the dependent variable is equal to a constant, which means just some number plus the combination of a slope times the independent variable. And the slope indicates the size and the direction of effect of the independent variable on the dependent variable. If the slope is negative, then that indicates a negative relationship. And if it's more strongly negative, like negative 100 instead of negative 5, then we know that there's a bigger negative effect. If it's a smaller negative number, like negative 0 0.5 instead of negative 100, then we know that it's a smaller negative effect. On the other hand, if we have a slightly positive effect, 0.125, then we know that that is a smaller positive effect than a bigger positive number, um, a slope of positive 342.6. That would be a, a, a big um, positive effect. So the slope is multiplied by the independent variable. And uh, if it uh, is a bigger number, you can think about what that multiplication does. It increases the effect of whatever the value of the independent variable is on the value of the dependent variable. That's what the algebra of multiplication does. Uh, think about what the constant means in this equation. dB equals constant plus slope times independent variable. Well, what if the independent variable is zero? Uh, if the independent variable is zero, then it doesn't really matter what the slope is. Uh, the slope times zero, whatever it is, will be equal to zero. So that means you can think of the constant as the value, the predicted value, of the dependent variable when the independent variable equals zero. Okay, So that's what the equation looks like. It expresses the same idea in an algebraic form that one of these graphs represents in graphic form. Every time you have a line like this, you have an equation that will describe it uh, in algebraic terms that looks like that. Sometimes the regression equation looks a little different. It just has a different notation. Instead of dv for de dependent variable, we write, we write y. It's just how it's written. Instead of constant, sometimes b sub 0 is written. 
And instead of uh, slope times an independent variable, the slope is given the notation b1, and the independent variable is given the notation x1 for the first independent variable and the first slope associated with the first independent variable. It looks slightly different, but it is the same idea, uh, just with different notation. So what if there's more than one independent variable? What if there's more than one thing in the world that affects your dependent variable? Well, it's actually kind of easy to extend this regression equation. If there are four things that affect y, your dependent variable, if there are four independent variables that you think matter, then you would me measure those four things. And each of them would have a slope that's associated with it to describe the effect of that uh, independent variable on your dependent variable. And so you would extend the regression equation out. If there are four independent variables, then your y, your dependent variable, is going to be equal to slope, just some number, plus b1 times x1 plus b2 times x2 plus b3 times x3 for the third independent variable and b4x4 for the fourth independent variable. Now I say plus dot 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 meaning heck you could have five independent variables and then you'd add b5 times x5. You could have a hundred of them. Okay, that's a little big but you could. Uh, conceivably. You could think of a hundred things that impact your why, whether that's time to death of cancer, or you know, whether you like a friend on Facebook, or something else like that, or some outcome that you're measuring in uh, a social network. For each of those terms, the interpretation is the same. For the part of your equation that says b1 times x1, b1 still describes the relationship between that x1 and your y, the uh, dependent variable. If it's positive, it means that as x1 goes up, y goes up. If it's negative, it still means that as x1 goes up, y goes down. Uh, it still means the same thing. It just allows you to explain simultaneously the effect of more than one independent variable, more than one explanation for why your dependent variable varies. Okay. For every independent variable there's a slope b, some b, b1, b2, or b3, to show the direction and magnitude of the effect on the dependent variable. So, what does this all boil down to? The multiple regression equation. It sounds highfalutin, but what it really means is that you're trying to mathematically predict the value of y. And if you have operationalized your variables so that you can measure it in a very specific way, and if you know what, if you can figure out somehow, there's a computer program that will help you do this to figure out what the constant b0 is and if you can use that same computer program to figure out what every slope coefficient ought to be if you can know those constants and you can know those slopes after you've operationalized your variables then the idea of a multiple regression is that you should be able to predict the out outcome to figure out the answer to your question, why do some people live longer with cancer? Why do some people like one another on Facebook? Which presidential candidate wins? These things that matter to you. Uh, you can describe uh, what the best predictions are and how the whole system works. You can lay it all out. And really, that's what we want to do in social science, is we want to explain meaningful outcomes. Uh, what you'll be doing next, 
uh, in this lecture is you'll be looking at an example of a multiple regression that has to do with voter turnout. You'll look at a regression table which lists uh, the constants and it lists all the slopes for each of these x's, each of these independent variables, and it gives a couple of other characteristics that describe how well that equation that that is out there, the multiple regression equation, how well it predicts what's going on in the dependent variable. Uh, after that point, in our next week's lecture, you're going to learn how to do a particular kind of this regression. It's one called uh, a QAP regression that uh, allows you to look at dyads in a network pairs of people who are connected or not connected in various ways and who have similar or dissimilar outcomes. Okay, That's the end goal that I want you to reach for your second written assignment. In order to understand what's happening with that, you first need to understand what multiple regression is all about. And I hope you understand it a little bit better. Uh, if you still haven't read the rest of uh, Lecture 12, take a look at that and you may find it to be further illuminating. Another way of looking at the subject. Thanks.